Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? I recently picked up a PlayStation Portable, and while it looks decent on the outside, there's unfortunately one big problem that I need to fix. While I already have a few other PSPs in my collection, this model is one I've been missing. An original PSP 1001 from the series launch in 2005. This was nicknamed the Fat PSP, but subsequent models weren't really all that much slimmer. It's overall in good condition considering its age, with just some regular wear and a few scratches on the front panel. But its cosmetic appearance hides a major flaw. This PSP must have been dropped at some point, which cracked the screen. It's going to be difficult to figure out if there's anything else wrong with this console otherwise, so I set out to replace the display. I popped the battery cover off to find that the rechargeable pack was missing. I can't say that I'm surprised by this, as PSP batteries are notorious for going bad. Both of my other PSPs have had their original batteries swell up, so that's likely what happened to this one. It's good to see though that the warranty void sticker is still intact. That means no one else has been tinkering around inside this console, and there's no sign of liquid damage either. I was hoping a memory stick would have been left in it, but no such luck. I do have one already, but a spare would have been nice. I put the PSP face down on a paper towel to try to prevent further scratches while I worked on it. There are a few Phillips screws inside the battery compartment that I needed to remove, starting with these two at the top. Then I could spin the console around and peel up one corner of the warranty sticker to remove another screw. The lack of these stickers doesn't really bother me, so I ended up removing it entirely to access the last screw hiding underneath. The bit on my screwdriver wasn't quite long enough to engage with the screws on the other side of the console, so I switched to a different one. There are two, and they're both identical. Finally, I could remove the single silver screw on the bottom, then flip the console over and lift up the front panel. I found it easiest to hinge it towards the top, then it came free. The buttons along the bottom of the display needed to come out next. They're attached to a metal bracket that clips to the sides of the screen. I used a small flathead screwdriver to pop one side loose, then I could easily unhook it from the other side. To disconnect its flat flex cable from the motherboard, I flipped up the brown plastic bale with my fingernail, then the cable slid right out. Next up was the screen itself. It was clipped to the PSP's chassis with these tabs, so I carefully unhooked them, then I could wiggle the screen free and rotate it downwards to expose its connectors. There are two flat flex ribbons, but they both get disconnected the same way. Flip up the bale, then slide the ribbon out. These plastic bales can be pretty fragile, so I think a fingernail works best to keep from breaking them. Here's a closer look at the broken screen. Without the backlight on, it's almost impossible to tell that it's been cracked. If you're in the market to buy a PSP, make sure you can see the console powered on so you can check the condition of the screen. As we saw with this one, there won't always be visible signs on the exterior that it's been dropped. I picked up a new replacement LCD panel off of eBay. I figured it would probably be a generic aftermarket part, but this one actually appeared genuine. There were a couple of small differences between the two screens though. The broken one I removed had this foam gasket around the outside. This is to help keep dust from getting on the display when the console's put together, and I kinda wanted to keep it if I could. I found the easiest option was to just swap the metal frames. It's only clipped on, and I was able to easily free it with just my fingernails. Because the new screen was an identical model, it snapped into place with no difficulty. The other thing I noticed is that the original panel had this black sticker covering some of the components on the flat flex. 
This is likely to prevent him from shorting on anything inside the PSP. I just used a couple pieces of capped on tape on the new screen to serve the same purpose. Reassembly was very straightforward. I reconnected the display ribbon cables, then flipped the screen up and into position. I ended up using the flathead screwdriver to help get the latches on both sides reseated. Since the front panel was already off, now was the best time to give the controls a good cleaning. I peeled off the membranes and took out the buttons and D-pad. I also unscrewed the analog stick, then used a spudger to pry off its cover from the front. Normally I'd wash plastic parts like these in the sink, but decided to let my ultrasonic cleaner do the work this time. I filled it with some distilled water, then lowered in the basket and turned it on, just to realize that these parts float. I ended up setting one of the basket's jewelry holders on top, just to make sure that they stayed submerged. With the parts cleaned and dried, I could get them all dropped back into the front panel. The membrane for the D-pad can be a little tricky. Make sure that the two flat sides are facing the screen and analog stick, otherwise the front panel won't fit quite right. Next, I got the button board reconnected, then clipped it back onto the bottom of the screen. Almost done. Before the front panel went back on, I carefully cleaned the new LCD. Any dust or fingerprints left on it will be annoyingly visible when the console's put back together. Then, with the inside of the front panel also dusted off, I simply hinged it back into place. Thankfully, there are only three different kinds of screws that hold everything together, so it was pretty easy to make sure they all went back where they came from. Those scratches in the upper corner of the display kind of bothered me, so I tried to remove them with some metal polishing compound. The results weren't quite what I'd hoped for, sadly. I've had good luck with this technique before, but I think these particular scratches were just a bit too deep. Replacement shells for the PSP are pretty inexpensive on eBay and can give you an opportunity to go with a custom color scheme. But in my case, I'm willing to live with the scratches, at least for now. What I did pick up from eBay was a new battery. These can be very hit or miss when it comes to quality, as original PSP batteries aren't available anymore, so all that's left are third-party replacements. If there's a particular brand you've had good luck with, I'd be interested to hear about it down in the comments. So with the screen swapped out, does the console work? Thankfully, yes. I dropped in a game and the UMD drive read it without a problem. Other than that cracked screen, this PSP doesn't seem to have suffered from any other problems. And the replacement LCD looks great. It gets nice and bright with vibrant colors. Not bad, considering the part only cost me about $25 US, including shipping. These days, the PSP seems to get the most attention as a target for custom firmware to run console emulators. That's a great option, but I do think the PSP's own game library can get overlooked at times. It has a wide variety of titles, many of which were groundbreaking. And with a new screen and fresh battery, this particular PlayStation Portable is all set to pick right back up where it left off. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on social media at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.